Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you could indulge me, I'd like a couple extra minutes too. It's okay. Certainly. <laughs> Counselor, did you really say that Justice Kavanaugh was a morally bankrupt person? Senator, as I explained, I did not write that letter. I did sign did it. Did you and read I it? I read it quickly, yes. And you sir. signed it? Yes, sir. Did you really say that Justice Kavanaugh, if he would was confirmed, would cause people to die? As I stated, Senator, I understood those statements were overheated rhetoric, but I understood them to be just yeah, that, but you said rhetorical. It. You said it, right? I did sign the letter, yes, Senator. Okay. Do you, do you believe that Brett Kavanaugh is a morally bankrupt person? Senator, sitting here as a judicial nominee, it is not appropriate for me to comment do you believe personally that, well, you on any said it. You said it. Do you believe that he's a morally bankrupt person? Senator, it is not appropriate for me Why to comment. Why not? You said it. I Senator, understand. Senator... I'm, I am giving you extra time, but can she be allowed to answer? Sure. I, I, I just want an answer. I agree that she should answer. You, you're not going to answer my question? I believe I've answered it to the best of my ability. Honestly, Senator, I respect completely the confirmation process and the authority oh, of Justice oh, Kavanaugh okay. and every but, Supreme Court justice. But, but do you – this is real simple. You said – just a few years ago, you weren't in law school, you weren't in college. You said Brett Kavanaugh is a morally bankrupt person. It's clear as thunder on a summer night. Now, you're under oath. Do you believe he is or not? How, how hard is that? You'll have much harder questions as a federal judge if you make it that far. I appreciate the question, Senator. As I stated, those statements were rhetorical advocacy that I signed as an alum addressing my law school alma mater. I did not... Well, let me, let me ask you about this rhetorical advocacy. Is, does rhetorical advocacy mean you said something, but now that you've been nominated, you're scared that you can't get the vote, so you're going to uh, try not to answer the question? Is that what rhetorical, ad, rhetorical advocacy means? What is rhetorical advocacy? Is it a lie? No, it's not a lie, Senator. I would say that it's statements that are made in service of an advocacy position. Okay. And it, 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 if you issue an opinion and you get reversed by the Supreme Court, are you just going to say, oh, don't worry about it, Justices? That was just rhetorical advocacy? What is this? Absolutely not, Senator. If the court issues an opinion as a lower court judge, I would be absolutely bound to... To follow it. It is not merely rhetorical advocacy. It is the law of the land. Okay, let me try one more time. Do you believe that Brett Kavanaugh is a morally bankrupt person? Senator, as sitting I Sitting here today, under oath. Sitting here today, under oath, I can assure you that I respect completely the authority of Justice Kavanaugh as a duly confirmed Supreme Court Justice of the United yes, States. Yes, ma'am, but do you believe he's morally bankrupt? Senator, as I stated... I respect his authority and the authority of every Supreme Court justice sitting on our court. Yes, ma'am, but, but do you believe he's morally bankrupt? My personal opinion is not for me is not appropriate for me to say. I respect his authority as a Supreme Court so justice. So you think he is, is morally words. bankrupt? I did not say that, Senator. But you signed a letter saying he was morally bankrupt. Several years ago, uh -huh. as an alum addressing my law school alma mater, I did sign a letter that I believed was addressed only to my law school administration. Oh, you but didn't think it would be public? I did not understand that it would be used as a public advocacy piece. No, okay. I believed it was only addressed to my law school administration. And you signed that because, because you wanted to show fidelity to your alma mater, Yale Law School? I signed it, Senator, at the time because I felt that it was an appropriate statement to make to my law school administration, notwithstanding the overheated rhetoric. But sitting here today as a judicial nominee, what I want to assure you is that as an advocate, as a litigator, as a neutral adjudicator, 
and as a judge, if confirmed, I would absolutely respect the authority of every Supreme Court justice and all of its precedents without reservation. See, I don't believe you. I think you, I think you said, I think you allowed your political beliefs to cloud your judgment. And I think you said a few years ago what, what you said about Brett Kavanaugh, and I think you believe it. And I can't imagine what it's going to be like to be a litigant in front of you with that demonstration of lack of judicial temperament and judgment. How can a litigant possibly think that you're not going to act on personal beliefs if you were so intemperate to say something like this? Last question. Are you proud of the fact that Yale Law School has a quota system limiting the number of Asian Americans? Have you ever written a letter about that? Or does that not, is that, how, where does that fit in your, your socioeconomic uh, view of the world that you think everybody else should adopt and you will impose if you're in a position of power? Senator, I'm not aware of any policy like that, but what I can assure you is that I have a track record. You need record to get out as, more. I have a track record as a neutral adjudicator. I have decided cases for nearly five years impartially by applying the law as set forth in our statutes, our constitution, and our precedents. You, and I have applied that law impartially. I have you, You're the only person in the Milky Way, way who believes you're impartial. Mr. Chairman. Can, can I'm we, done, Mr. Chairman. Can we, 